Well, I think it's about time we warm things up a little bit. So for our next story, we're spending a summer's day along the waterfront in one of Michigan's most beautiful lakeside cities, Port Huron. And as you'll soon see, there's much more to the story than sandy shores and blue water. So here we are in downtown Port Huron. It's a beautiful summer's day. And you know, this city is a place that I've been to a couple of times, but I've always wanted to learn more about it. And we're gonna be meeting up with Andrew Kircher of Port Huron Museums. He's gonna take us to the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, take us underneath the Blue Water Bridge, and show us some of the few hot spots that are around Port Huron that you're definitely gonna to wanna to visit on your next trip. So let's go hit the road and take a look at Port Huron. To kick off our Port Huron excursion, we meet up with Andrew at the Fort Gratiot Light Station. I figure if anyone comes to Port Huron, this is probably the thing they are most likely to see and for good reason. Uh, we're on the grounds of the Fort Gratiot Light Station. This is actually the oldest light station in the state of Michigan. It's pretty cool. Michigan has more lighthouses than any other state. There's a lot of people who love lighthouses and you'd really be remiss if you missed this one. We were really kind of presented with a conundrum of what do you interpret at a light station like this? What stories do you tell? Because this lighthouse has been in operation longer than any other in the state. And the 1930s became a pretty logical choice uh, for us to make. And that's because it marks the end of the lighthouse establishment and civilian lighthouse keepers. But the 1930s, it transitions to being Coast Guard control. And there's still an active Coast Guard base right next door. All of these buildings were used by the Coast Guard until just a little over a decade ago. Uh, the 1930s is also really important for Port Huron because one of the coolest pieces of infrastructure in the whole state was built in 1938, the Blue Water Bridge opens. Just downriver from the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse is arguably Port Huron's most famous landmark, the Blue Water Bridge. Everywhere else you go in the state, when you say the bridge, everyone's talking about the Mackinac Bridge. When you're in the thumb, and when you're in Port Huron and you talk about the bridge, you're talking about this bridge. The bridge connects Port Huron to the city of Sarnia, Ontario, across the river. It was a collaborative effort between the United States and Canada to, to build that bridge. Uh, and it was dedicated to international peace in 1938. And of course, the traffic, this is, I think, the second busiest international border crossing uh, in the country, if not like the Western Hemisphere, one of the busiest, certainly in the whole world. By the 1990s, the one bridge just wasn't cutting it anymore, uh, and they built a second one. A lot of people said it should be an exact copy. Now, we don't care if it's obsolete, it would look weird if it isn't, but the engineers actually came up with a compromise. So it has almost the exact same shape and profile, but it provides a really neat contrast between new and old. It's still an incredibly busy and incredibly important border crossing. In the shadow of the Blue Water Bridge stands a train depot dedicated to Port Huron's most famous former resident. Thomas Alva Edison. Thomas Edison is definitely Port Huron's favorite son. Now, he's not born here. He's actually born in Milan, Ohio, but moves up here at a very young age. And this is where he gets his start, his interest in science, technology, uh, and inventing. And he gets a job very early on as a teenager at that railroad station. So his job, uh, he was selling newspapers, candy, apples, Edison's job at the train station granted him an outlet to put his creativity to good use. Eventually, started printing a newspaper on the train. He'd print that up on one little page and a little galley press in the back of the train and sell it right then and there. It's like 1860s twit. That is information as fast as it comes back then. Being world famous, it was always a treat for the people of Port Huron when you come back home uh, and visit him. So if you come to Port Huron, you'll notice there are a lot of things named uh, after Thomas Edison. Now our next stop in Port Huron was something that was completely new to me. In my travels, I've seen plenty of lighthouses, but this was the first time I've ever seen a light ship. A light ship is a floating lighthouse. It anchors itself on the danger and has a light, just like a lighthouse. You can see it at the top of the mast there. There's actually two of them. We think about a big storm, it's always good to be able to like maneuver your ship out of the waves. This is anchored. It's gonna go up and down and slam up and down and side to side. And you have to stay in the same spot as best you are able to warn other sailors about that danger. Now the Huron was actually the very last of the light ships on the Great Lakes, but this one was being used until 1970, which is pretty crazy when you think about how late that is. An important part of Blue Water area history as well as a fascinating part of just Great Lakes history in general. After hopping all around town, Andrew and I wrap up our Port Huron tour in the city's vibrant and bustling downtown, right at the mouth of the Black River. 
To walk from one end to downtown to the other might take you 45 minutes, but you can see something from almost every decade, going back to the 1840s. I think in the 90s, like a lot of places across Michigan and the Midwest, a mall drew lots of people to uh, outside of town, and downtown was pretty deserted. Well, it's exactly the opposite now. Every store downtown is either open or undergoing construction. Something else is coming in new and exciting. Uh, we've got things for families. We have historic places you can visit. We've got a great beach. You can spend the day outdoors. You can spend it indoors. There is something for literally everyone in Port Huron in a small town atmosphere. I think cool things are happening here. We've got a great influx of uh, young people um, coming in. We have one of the greatest a uh, return of new college grads are coming back to St. Clair County. They're coming back to Port Huron, coming into these downtown shops, into these lofts, uh, and really revitalizing the town. So I'm excited to see where things are going. If you want to dive even deeper into the history and beauty of Port Huron, you can head to the Port Huron Museum's website at phmuseum.org.